17th, 2020, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. To my far left is Justin Lawrence. My left is Flo Smith. To my right is John Quinn. I'm Brad Town. With us also are Tom Badowski, our town acting town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, in addition or changes to the agenda? I have one on marked on your brand. Uh, fire department. Public comment. Any public comment from people attending this meeting via conference call? Moving right along, Treasurer's Report, Diane. Okay. Um, the final day to pay taxes was today because the 15th fell on a Saturday. Uh, money has been coming in very steady. A lot of people are paying for all four quarters. But I am going to ask this time again. If you want me to put back the penalty and interest for one month, that until September 15th. And I only ask that because if you did it last time, it seemed to work. Um, like I said, money is coming in. I don't know how you feel about it. But I want to be able to answer that question. And I do plan on running delinquent tax bills um, in a couple days. Okay, so. How does the board feel about putting back the uh, penalties for another month? Do you think that spurred people with a sense of urgency to actually get the payments in um, last time? I guess I want to be able to answer a question if I'm asked. That's my that's the reason I bring it up. Yeah, I know. What do you think? But, but I do you think it made them pay them any faster? Or you know, it's hard to tell right now because I still have a lot of payments that the checks came in uh, like today late today and we haven't opened those yet. Um, right now we have a pass through like 445 but it's very simple. I can easily have over 100,000 in checks that are waiting to be opened for tomorrow. So it's hard to say. I have not had anybody people really uh, complaining and calling. The only ones that have been called are those that normally get state payments that did not file their taxes on time and there's been maybe you know 10 or 20 of them. <clears throat> What's your recommendation, Diane? Do you do it or not to do it? Uh, it's not really up to me. I know, but well, what's yeah. your recommendation? I don't really know that. Any motion from the board? Uh, I don't know what you guys think. We feel like we need it. Out of curiosity, do you have any idea how much the penalties would be? Yes. As a, as for dollars? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, personally, I think that we should have the penalty. You know, What's that? I think we should keep the penalty in place. So not, not delay it another month? I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need a motion for that, though, right? I mean, that's... No, because we have, have to have a motion to extend it. <clears throat> yeah. Just leave it as it is. So. That's my thought. Okay. Right. Yeah. All I've got, anything else I have is in the uh, agenda. Okay. Uh, Fisher Road Colbert, Robert Clark, and Steve Kelson. Steve, you want to come up here? Or you want to grab your chair? Thank you. Yeah. Robert, are you there? I am. Okay, do um, you want to talk to these folks about what we've discovered in the last week or so with respect to Fisher Road? Certainly. So, um, my name is Robert Clark. I'm a project engineer for Otter Creek Engineering, and, and we're assisting the town of Berlin with a sewer project on Payne Turnpike North. And um, the contractor, Dubois Construction, has been actively working on that road. Um, and while they were out there, we had a, a pre-construction meeting. We happened to notice um, that the Fisher Road culvert near the intersection with Payne Turnpike North um, had completely deteriorated. The, the bottom of the culvert um, had uh, uh, eroded away, corroded away. And um, I took some photos. I, I sent them to Tom and, and Dana at the time and just started a conversation about what we could do to uh, 
find that structure if it was possible. Um, the uh, the challenge with it <coughs> is that <coughs> there's a lot of water that comes through that structure, and uh, because of that, the regulators at least wanted uh, some engineering analysis done to, to confirm whether or not that existing structure with a with a new liner in it would be able to adequately handle the, the type of storms that we typically see. And in this case, it would be a, what they consider a 50-year storm event. Um, so I, I ran through, I did that analysis. We've submitted it to the state just for a quick review to see if it would pass um, their standards. Um, they've yet to respond to that. Uh, but concurrently, we, we started engaging with Dubois and with uh, Steve Wolf at, at Contact on um, pulling together some cost estimates for lining that, that existing culvert. And Tom, have you have you shared the photos with the board? I have, yes. Okay. So that that's a little bit of uh, where we're at with with that right now. Um, we had a meeting last week with uh, two boys, uh, Tom, myself, and Steve Wolf from Comptec, and talked through uh, just. The complexities of the project, you know, the water level can rise up to uh, up to the existing structure height, which is roughly 12 feet, um, and so it makes it complicated um, when you're talking about doing a repair project in the fall, which is when we typically get a lot of rain events, uh, you know, in the October uh, the month of October and late fall. Um, I believe Dubois provided Tom a a, a range cost estimate. Uh, order of magnitude of what they thought it might be. Um, Tom, have you shared that with the board as well? Uh, not, not the number specifically. It was in the high 200000 to low $300,000 range, exclusive of the of the sleeve, uh, which Steve is here uh, representing uh, contact on that sleeve, which is about $75,000 uh, sleeve. So what I wanted to... Uh, I, I'm viewing this as a as an emergency repair. I think it's it's probably, if not the most critical piece of infrastructure in our town, is 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 very close. Uh, after the super, sewer project is done, it'll carry two water force mains and a sewer force main, um, and it's the main artery to the Central Vermont uh, Hospital. So I'm here to, to get the temperature of the board of, of funding the replacement, assuming we can get agency and natural resources permitting and get this project done this construction season. Uh, and so I shared with you can't even remember now, maybe Friday, uh, it was a list Diane put together of potential revenues that could be used. And it's the, to the tune of, she guesstimates $340,000 to $390,000, depending on uh, what, what uh, savings can be used. So I, I'm just here I'm talking to you folks, to the board, about what, how do you want this to proceed? Do we want to continue with our um, uh, engineering work? Um, I, to, I don't think we could really come up with a, a design per se in a timely manner. Uh, Robert, you could speak to that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, if the decision is to move forward um, right away under an emergency situation, I think uh, the town working directly with Dubois with some assistance on just getting the permits in place is probably all that's necessary um, from an engineering perspective. Um, I, I think there's a couple of potential permits that are needed. Uh, the most important being a, an approval from the state river management engineer that hydraulically the culvert, that they, that they agree with our analysis that the culvert can handle the storms that we see. Okay. Okay.
How, right now, do you know the uh, flow capacity of that culvert? Yeah, we, well, Robert looked at it. So the, we know what the existing structure is. It's a 150-inch vertical ellipse multi-plate. Uh, so we know what the area of that was. It was 124 square feet, I believe. And what we're proposing to align it with is the exact same shape structure, but smaller. And the new structure is 104 square feet. And what Robert does at Otter Creek is, you know, he, he can run, a, it's called, I think it's called an HY8 analysis or some other hydraulic program. So he determines what the headwater depth for the 50-year storm is for the existing structure, and then they run it for the proposed structure, which is less area. And then they compare those uh, elevations just to make sure it's not flooding properties upstream, like increasing the floodplain too much. And I think, Robert, you can chime in, I think, on what um, what the difference in the headwaters were between the two structures, possibly? Um, neither <clears throat> neither structure resulted in a headwater condition that overtopped the inlet of the structure. Um, and I, uh, I'm trying to open up as we're speaking, but I, I believe the resulting capacity of the new structure exceeded the, the Q50 storm, which is uh, um, roughly 900 cubic feet per second. Yeah, the other thing, so this uh, this drainage area comes out of Berlin Pond, which is the Montpelier water supply. Uh, so theoretically, uh, Berlin Pond's acting like a big stormwater management pond because it's storing water and it's metering it out at a, at a certain flow rate. Uh, so even though there's a huge drainage area, I think it's, what was it, 15 square miles or something? 15 or 19, yeah. yeah. it's a huge amount of drainage area, but the flows are not as splashy as they would be. Uh, you know, on a regular culvert with 15 square miles where you don't have a big storage pond that's <coughs> in the So, Rowan Pond, the outlet culvert that goes under the throughway, that's the, that's the restrictor right there. That's, right. that's what, if this culvert can take the flow of that, or yeah, what size is that? You know, what it goes under the <laughs> it's probably a vertical ellipse because that's basically, because we've lined a lot under the interstates. I think that's a, a cement box. Oh, right? cement box, because we a lot of the ones under the interstate with a lot of cover are these vertical ellipses. Yeah. So the ones that we mostly line for the for green trans are the same shape as what you guys have. Okay. So that's why I was just guessing it might be a vertical ellipse. But yeah, it could be a box. I have a lot of cover. Sure. I'm pretty sure it was a box cover that goes underneath there. Might not be able to, right, you're right, because the highway's not a lot higher than the road below it, so yeah. a box might make sense, whereas a lot of the ones are deep fills and then they do the vertical ellipses because they think that the, back in the 60s when they built them, they thought if they built the vertical ellipse that all the fill would squash them down the round, but they never squashed down the round, they stayed vertical ellipses. It was just what people thought back then. <laughs> So I really see three options for the board. The first one is do nothing, which I don't think is an option. But, uh, the second one is is we could, you guys can uh, uh, not not do this emergency work this construction season. Get some further analysis and uh, some hard design from Otter Creek and bid this for uh, 2001. Um, and then I would encourage the board to look at putting a, a bond vote on the November election to, to cover this cost, unless you have an, another $500,000 that I don't know about. Um, uh, or the third one is to, to act uh, uh, with, as it says, it, it, it is an a emergency situation and use some of these funds to offset the, the cost of this work this fall so those, those are the three options I see and, and the first one I, as I said I, I, it's not a, I, I don't believe it's a viable option to do it but, but at this point we don't know what the exact cost will be we do not no no that's what we had in reserves that's no, right? yes, in reserves yeah oh okay well he well yeah, I mean, so it was. Uh, they the, came the material in, uh, was 75, and he said it was like 310, right? Yeah. So yeah. whatever that is, 385. Uh, I will let, let me add. I've done probably 40 of these with B trans over the years, and this is the worst one that I've ever seen as far as the current condition. 
a lot of times V-trans will line them under the interstates that aren't even rusted out. But this thing, there's really no invert left, and there's a lot of failures. You know, and I'm surprised that they haven't had more sinkholes. Especially on the upstream end, it's completely failed for like 30 feet in on the upstream end. So you know, the thing, you know, the big storms are really take down the road. So then, you know, you're into a two or three million dollar project, plus you're going to get fined for like sewer releases into the stream and that sort of thing. The uh, what is involved in lining the coal? What kind of equipment? Uh, really, just you know, he's going to probably have a you know a pump going, sandbags excavator um, and then he's going to have some he's going to have to some sheeting to remove the upper 30 feet of it because it's so bad that you really can't align the upper 30 feet it's going to be a correct area there um, and then he's going to have to pump concrete down he's got to put like a concrete head wall on the upstream end he's going to do a half concrete head wall on the downstream end which is called a tow wall um, so, so i was looking at the estimate and it, it, it looked like it was um, you know, just the head walls are probably almost 30% of the project. Um, but they're, v, we're just doing it the way V-Trans does them. V-Trans always puts a nice improved head wall on the upstream end. Currently, they're, it, it's just a little tow wall on the upstream end that has been detached from the, um, the, the pipe structure. But that's a, when it if, I could, if I could add to that, the, the head walls, uh, at least on the inlet side, help with the uh, hydraulics of the of the structure, you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's slightly smaller waterway open. So in, improving the way that the water enters the structure does help. Um, and Have you done one for the trans like this recently? Yeah, we did one um, up in Georgia in March and April was 600 feet under I-89. It was the only project that the trans had going on in March and April because they, they had a sinkhole in the shoulder and they line one. It was 108 inch diameter. The, the new pipe was 108 inch vertical ellipse that went through the existing vertical ellipse. Yeah. And, um, so what I'm looking for here is like a comparison in cost. Okay, well that job that, that job ended up costing the trans close to $3 million. But the reason it did is because the base flows there were amazingly high base flows and they had to directionally bore um, three 30 inch pipes under the interstate that were also 600 feet long and then they were running two 24 inch pumps. I talked to new boys on this and I think he said he was just figuring like a 12 inch pump to handle the base flows here. So the base flows are quite a bit smaller than what they were um, out in Georgia. So mm -hmm. you know, there was a huge drainage area. So maybe you guys can speak to the cost that, that if, if this fails and then they require a box culvert rather than than uh, the sleeving of this this culvert, what that cost would be. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Tom. You know, I, I think one of the things that's challenging from an engineering perspective now, and um, and we see it a lot on projects, is if you get um, if you get a structure that's undersized or that it, it, it that it gets to a point where it's completely failed, the state requires you to build it to the most current engineering standard for design. And often what controls with that now is, is a term that they use called bank full width, which essentially represents the natural width of the water body that's running through that culvert. So um, we had engaged the state river management engineer after we noticed how bad this was, had him come down and take some preliminary measurements because he, he would have to concur on that width. And essentially if this structure needs to be replaced, he estimated to span somewhere between 30 and 50 feet. So that, that doesn't really even allow you the opportunity to do, you know, a, a traditional concrete box filter with a flat bottom. It would be a bottomless arch structure of some type or, or a traditional bridge. And the cost of that would be substantially higher. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, without any plans, over a million dollars probably. Um, so it, it, it makes it challenging. And Steve actually just finished up a project with me um, in New Haven, Vermont, where that was basically the situation. They had two six foot diameter steel tubes that went across this road. Um, I first looked at that project probably a decade ago, and at that time, the state would have approved an 18 foot wide or 20 foot wide concrete box culvert. Um, they let the, the things go because funding didn't work for them, and, and they didn't. They had some other priorities that they wanted to work through, and 
when they finally failed, they needed to be replaced, and the span was uh, 32 feet wide. And um, and in their case, they were able to go with a, a metal structure, and they had a lot of the. It was a much simpler process. There wasn't a lot of traffic on that road. It wasn't a, a difficult excavation, but they were over a half million dollars um, in, in doing that structure very quickly. So I think that's, that's the risk you run if you do nothing. Um, you know, to Tom's point, uh, it, it's, it's only a matter of time before it completely fails. And one of the, one of the things that makes me nervous is that, you know, it, it, everybody talks about spring, uh, snow melt and ice ice outs as being a big uh, water event. You know, we get a lot of significant flow in late fall. And um, and I think we're coming into those two seasons, late fall and, and next year in the spring, where that structure is certainly going to be put to the test. Uh, it's already undermined. And with significant flows, it could wash out the road. OK. So. so so can we, as a board, rule out that we're not going to do anything just as a, you know, straw poll? And fi then figure out like what our options are. Well, as I see it, we have two options: we either sleeve it now, or we sleeve it in the spring. Right. I just want to rule out the other piece so we can stop talking about all the you know scare tactics yeah. of you know of you know you know what if. Yeah. Like we know we have to do something, right? But um, I just want to move on and you know maybe you could help us with what our options are as far as spending. Um, what if we were to spend now? Can we still ask for the, a bond to repay in November? I, that I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to think of a way to, you know, still bond for it, um, but not use up every piece of, you know, every line item that we have, every reserve penny that we have to, to do it, because we could put ourselves in a really bad situation I, then. I don't know, the trouble is, is that uh, the money that we do have to spend some of that is the greater fund also. Mm -hmm. right. And I don't believe we can bond for equipment. So that leaves um, right. that leaves it so that we have to either bond for the structures right. and buy a greater, or we have to take and figure out something else to get us everything we need. Right. And I think the way the the greater was set up, it was lease payments for 10 years. So you wouldn't necessarily have to bond for that anyways. If you didn't make your payment one year, they take it back, right? No, what I'm purpose. saying is you can't bond for equipment. No, I, I understand. We yeah. wouldn't want to because no, the bonds are I mean, the greater we take and do a loan, that's not a problem. I, I can take that. The problem is that we can't take it and spend the money twice. Um, so I, I'm just, the public's work has gone out to a couple bond votes now, and, and uh, it may need a little further search on my part, but my sense is if, if tonight you folks said that you were going to bond, whatever, uh, have a bond vote, that uh, you could in, start incurring expenses against that, that motion in anticipation of, of of uh, that that happening and because you always have expenditures before you have the bond vote. You have to do your engineering. You have to do all this, um, and so I, I would encourage you to make it. You know, put together a, a, a two million dollars maybe because you have Richardson Road. You have some other things that you probably need some TLC, and uh, and and then. And I could this coming week I could I could start talking to the bond bank and or uh, uh, whoever whoever else is out there and see what do we truly need to allow us to start spending money. But but my sense is maybe if you make a motion tonight that may be enough to start allowing expenditures. Can I have one thing? Yeah. Uh, so work in streams in Vermont and Robert you can correct me if I get this wrong is June 15th, October 1st. But in a situation like this, the river management engineer would probably give some sort of a reasonable extension into mid-October, maybe even late October, to finish up the project. But if you were going to do it in the spring, it would be challenging to start it before June 15th. Um, now, the VTrans project, they did in March and April because the interstate was collapsing. 
but you know, it, in the, in the other thing that I wanted to mention is Robert talked about the New Haven project. That project had no utilities above it. So, so the other thing with this is you, you have some important utilities above it, the two force mains for water and the sewer force main, which makes it even more complicated a, you know, if you were to do a replacement one yeah. day. So, so yeah, just food for thought. So, and I'm not sure what Du Bois' schedule was, and then those guys are constantly doing work around here anyway. So, I mean, they're probably pretty much already mobilized in this area, so. so did I get that right, Robert? Yes, you did. So you haven't heard, so nobody's heard back from the state on this project. We've talked to Jared uh, three or four times. Um, we really did expect something last week, but no, we have not heard a definitive. It's not a definitive. He did indicate that, you know, if we provided him the information that I did, that it, that it should uh, meet their qualifications for lining. What was the board's pleasure? Tom, are you sure that we could start to spend money against uh, future I'm not bonds? positive, but okay. I'm taking the vote today is a placeholder that I'm, I'm thinking it does, but then between tonight's vote and the next couple of days, right. I'm going to confirm what so we're not going to be, we're not going to. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking like if we didn't have enough money, right? And it actually collapsed and we needed to do something, we would have to figure out how to do it. So there must be a mechanism financially for us to be able to get it done. I just don't know what it is. Um, borrowing with this, uh, I don't know the borrowing mechanisms that the town has. Uh, well, a bank will only borrow up to 10 years. So that's well, so you'd have to maybe get that and do a, a bridge uh, uh, financing to take that, that note out. Now, is there any possibility for a grant or anything on the back end on this time? Not, not in this time frame. Uh, I, I don't know about the, I know we got I, one. I don't know about Robert, your sense of grants post construction? The grant post construction? Yes. Uh, I would say no. In, in my experience, typically they'll they'll give some grant for engineering and planning if you're a couple of years ahead on a project, and then they'll give you you can get up to one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in a structures grant from B Trans for projects like this. Um, I mean, that, that would be the preferred route in a situation that was a little bit different than what we have now. And there's no no money coming from the state for this project at all, from what I understand. That is correct. No, we got a post-construction grant for the Mirror Lake one, right? But was that because it collapsed? The Mirror Lake I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The Mirror Lake Calder, we got a post construction grant on that, right? We gave it about 175000 And so that was that because that had completely failed? I don't know exactly why. Um, Dana did all of that work. Um, but I know that we had, you know, we had to apply for a grant and we get a grant. On Richardson Road, he was not able to get one. Okay. We, we'll, we will pursue all avenues of post grants, but I would not count that chicken if I were you. Well, somehow we got to get a motion that will take and allow us to go forward. Um, not a lot of caveats there for uh, waiting for monies. already there. We don't have that expense of moving it into next spring. Um, the only trouble is, is uh, if, we, if we 
do use the cash on hand to do it, and if the grader fails, we're going to be wrecking the machine for a while. I, it becomes a lesser of two evils, I think, for us. Yeah. I would think we should probably look at the Richardson Road culvert, this culvert. Well, that was, you know, we right out there, if, yeah. we bond, if we bond, that was what I would, Tom and I were talking today, would that be the thing to do is look at all of them, get the all and get them done. And if I could just add a comment to that, um, we, we just helped uh, a client do that. They, they didn't realize they had so much deferred maintenance on structures and they ended up putting together, a, I think it was a three and a half million dollar bond to do basically what you just talked about, which was replace a couple of uh, very key structures, the four or five of them over the next two years. How long, does it, how long does a sleeve last? Well, it's an aluminum structural plate in their 100 year service life. So, like the structure in there now, and what year it was built, by, my suspicion is it's probably 40 years old, 35, 40 years old, and it's galvanized steel. And when we sleeve one of those big structures, we use aluminum, which which basically they, they like main DOT puts them in, in, into the ocean, and they do very well. So, they can handle a lot of uh, bad, bad water and abrasion and all sorts of stuff. Now, is there any corrosion from the zinc to the aluminum? Uh, no, it's between black steel and aluminum. Okay. So, like for example, we have a structure up in, um, in the coast of Maine. It was put in in 1966. And it's got galvanized steel bolts and nuts holding it together, and it's an aluminum structure. And they're doing very well because the zinc um, is an insulator between the um, aluminum and the black steel underneath the zinc. And what this points to is we. I talked to Tim. We're, we're going to do an inventory of, of all of our structures, and these need to be on a, on a capital asset accounts that where you're put, it's putting money aside to, to replace these things. So, you know, it's just, it's, Probably that's going to be in the future. No, I, I get that. But is that? The fu I get that, but the future is right now. It's not very, very, not very pleasant. Not very bright. So, so you guys mentioned a couple of different projects that. We may be bond for it. What are the projects? Richardson Road has a very similar culvert, but yeah. significantly less. Uh, there's 10 or 15 homes on that culvert. And there's a bridge deck, Lover's Lane bridge deck, I yeah. believe. Yeah, that's, that's just decking, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not, that's not a, that's, probably speaking, that's not a big ticket item. But then you have the two culverts that go underneath um, Crosstown down here. And the same people that took and said that the uh, the um, Fisher Road, the Fisher Road project was all right. And that culvert was all right. Said these these two culverts out here were fine too. Right. So I would take and I would take and have Tom have uh, Tim walk those culverts. Yeah. With a bar and just make sure there's no soft spots in them. This one you don't even have to find the soft spots. Yeah, we I saw the little nice out the picture. It's pretty scary. And, and usually um, I walk through a lot of stuff. I've <laughs> been doing this for 30 years, and, and that was one, one of the worst ones, and I'm surprised that it's still functional. So remind me how much the Richardson Road was again? Well, Estimated that? The prediction was about 225 to 250 prediction. Right now we've only got $8,000 into it, and it's been like over a three-year period. Then, uh, you, I mean, if you're looking at the, at the at what you're going to have to bond for, you're looking at most of call 400000 for Fisher Road, and I would say 100000 for that bridge deck. I mean, the bridge deck is basically wood with some, there's some steel understructure that needs a little work, but that's not terribly expensive. We don't have any estimates on that bridge, though. Not that I, I think Dana was supposed to look into that. He didn't give me any. Maybe yeah. we should, yeah. I don't think it came to the motion. Yeah. So, but uh, the only thing with Lover's Lane is is that they, they send those empty dump trucks across to keep them off of uh, cross, uh, Comstock, not Comstock. Chandler. 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 There we go. Chandler. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, so that's the importance of Lover's Lane, really. Um, uh, 
and the unknown culverts under Crosstown Road. Yeah. Right. And probably each of those are 400,000. Well, I would imagine making the same cost to do this one here. Yeah, and there's two of them. So. Yeah, right. But they, I don't think they're that big. I think they put two in to keep the height in. Right. So they spread it out sideways. Yeah, you get, I mean, the way to do that is just look at the you know diameter of what's there and the drainage areas and stuff. The, the material that we're proposing here is the same material as Muir, was it Muir Pond Road? Or, or Muir Lake Road. Or Muir Lake Road, that's, that's an aluminum box culvert. Uh, this is just a different shape, but it's the same material that was used there. But then this will have concrete that will yeah, And you're it's, saying this has a 100 year service life. Yeah, so the, you know, Muir, you know, Muir Lake is the same thing. If the foundation holds up, the wood, the wood uh, it's but, I mean, the <laughs> but it was there for 100, you know, 100 years before that, right? But, so I'm a no vote for that right away because we haven't even looked at the bridge. We haven't looked at the culvert. No, no, so. no, no, I'm saying, like, yeah, you, you can bond. You don't have to spend it. Yeah, well, we always, we as towns always find a way to, I feel like. Yeah. And the higher the number, the less likely we're going to get a confirmation that we actually get the bond from the town, right, or from the citizens. So. You know, I, I don't mind asking for some cushion, but I think we either need to check out those culverts and then, you know, make a motion or ask for what we know now. Well, I mean, the culverts. Um, I'd be happy to help you guys do an assessment of these if you have a uh, handful of them that need to be looked at. And we do these all the time. I can give you an engineer's opinion on them. Yeah, but, I, but I'm really of the mindset that we go with what we know <laughs> today. And yep. and do a you could always do another bond vote at, at town meeting. I agree. I I would hate to take and go back to the well on the bond, but I'd rather take and overdo the first one than uh, have to go back and ask for more. Um, I agree that I'd like to know what we need. Well, perhaps what we should do is do uh, have that assessment done. If it can be done right away, and then we'll just have a select, uh, special that meeting next, next week. And also, have we run it through our town attorney yet? The potential of this, I do note on the form that it said if we come to a vote tonight to redirect the funds to verify with the town attorney first. Have we done that yet? That was for a portion of the funding. Though. Oh, okay. So I don't know we haven't. No. Okay. So I guess one other thing that I would recommend is um, since we know we got to do something to Fisher Road, and I, I asked my plan a couple of days ago, and I, I forgot if they sent anything back, but I thought we could just send a ring out of the proposed liner, uh, so pro, you know, just like a four and a half foot section of it. And have you know the two boys or somebody put it together and just kind of like walk it through to make sure it's going to fit. Because you know rather than you know sending a hundred was it a hundred and some feet, uh -huh. um, you know and, you know, make sure it's going to fit all the way through and you know, that can be done you know with a piece small piece of equipment like a um, you know just a walk behind steel steer or something. And they can push it through even the wet. Yeah, might be worth just doing that just to make sure. So, so let me let me investigate these other culverts, and we'll, I will be get back to you here in a couple couple days. Uh, when you find out, uh, and you're sure, uh, let me know, and we'll set the set the meeting for next week. I don't know about being sure. I'll have a better thing for me. So, uh, so what's the schedule if we do move forward with the uh, uh, Fisher Road replace replacement culvert or liner? But is this something that they would be able to do yeah, in so September we, we, or October? We could, we could get it to you when Du Bois Construction wants it because they, I mean, I think they would be the critical path because they have to come in and drive some sheets and set up some sandbags and some pumps right. and stuff. And I think we could probably, from the time you guys tell us to go on the, you know, the 150 feet or whatever it is, it would take us three or four weeks to make it and get it here. But like I say, you know, then we're, we're starting to, you know, we're, let's say it's August 20th this week, right? So, yeah. so you know, you're four weeks, you're getting into late September already. 
so by that time we would hope that two boys could have been mobilized, broke the sheets on the upstream end so they could take out that 30 feet on the upstream end and then have the liner arrive and get it through. But, but doing the test piece might be yeah. something that you would, would make a lot of sense to even tonight to, to tell us to you know, get a test piece you know, made up and out here and then they have it and they can put it together and just verify the, you know, the shape. The, the reason I was asking was just primarily around the vote and whether or not we really needed to wait till November or we could hold a special vote in, in September or the very beginning of October and that way we have more certainty probably before the work finishes and that way we're not depleting all of our funds um, that we have. There's there's certain timings to get this yeah, public notification, notification and, and um, I think we're close to the deadline being on the November ballot, to be honest with you, John. Okay. Yeah. I know I know there was 30 days, so I just didn't know. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's more, more than that. that. Yeah. Okay. As well. But okay. I, I defer to Rosemary. I'll talk to her about that tomorrow. Okay. So we could potentially have the project pretty much all wrapped up before we even know if we got the bond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, Tom, have you got directive now? I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Robert. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I guess what think we take it that test piece here? Ouch. I was just looking through my emails to see if they <laughs> yeah. actually responded to my email the other day. And just for clarity and for all the people so on I'll, I'll in TV on. land, sure uh, this would yeah. be a no yeah. bid because we already have You're someone welcome. outside thank doing work. Well, thank you for coming. So, that's the only reason that we wouldn't bid it. Okay. Okay. Even around like this and we, okay. we short it. Travel, Steve, please. you need any action for this piece or do you need what do you need? No, I think I mean we we'll, 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 when I can find out about a test piece, I'll just get that going because it's you know, small potatoes. We'll, we'll, we'll have that all on the uh, we'll, we should be able to do that and have it all ready for next week if we have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you're making, you need them, or you, you need, are we allocating funds to this test piece? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I, yeah, I got to so, so, put it in at some point, no, get, whatever the get. total is. So, so can, you, like, can you send me tomorrow what? Yeah, what, okay. it'll be four, I mean, the rings are four and a half feet out of the one. Yeah, so, you're, so we just got it. And I can try to parlay it with something headed okay. this way. Or even, like, send it on an LTL, and then we can always just yeah. unload. And I can come help you unload it and everything. You know, just, okay. Just, right. just give me something. Or, so it'll be like 10, 10, 10 plates. Yeah. Okay. okay, awesome. Thank you. You're, you're Have a good evening. Thank you, too. Thank you for coming in. Okay, um, Brandy Saxton, uh, Berlin Town Center. Hey, Brandy, you still with me? I am. All right, good. So uh, you saw the agenda that I sent out. It includes three items for the select board's uh, consideration. The first one is the draft authority to adopt town plans and et cetera. This is, the, I think, the third time now that the select board has seen this. This, in effect, would um, uh, ask the voters to give back uh, the, the ability to make changes to town plans, bylaws, and such to the select board rather than having them going to a, a town vote. And as we met uh, back in late July at the Grange, uh, it was it's, it's it's an imperative need when you're negotiating contracts or trying to get get commitments from uh, contractors to be able to move sometimes more expeditious than a town vote allows. Now, it, it still allows the select board to, to do the uh, uh, things. Of, major components of items if, if to go to a town vote. That's always the prerogative of the select board. So uh, what I would like you folks to act on tonight and act in an affirmative is to uh, add this um, language that was developed to the uh, November vote. Do 
do we need a valid through date? I'm sorry? Do we need a valid through date? We need a valid through date. Why would we make it just for a few years if this is a project that's going to be a couple decades? You know what I mean? Like, it, it says valid through 2026. A comprehensive. So that's the town plan that's valid through 2000. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. That's I'm our trying town to this is. Okay. The, the, this is in perpetuity. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Until so we get petitioned to have a change again. Well, then, correct. Jump that, jump that bridge when we get there. Yes. And and what's I'm going to assume that if the, that the select board would like to do this. We really need you folks to reach out to the constituency and explain why this is needed. Okay, it's one thing for me to do it, it's one thing for our consultants to do it. You folks are elected officials, you know, work your networks, get them going, get the buzz going, and, uh, you know, explain to them. Uh, and and uh, the, the town center, I think, in my personal opinion, is the, is the, the biggest and broadest economic development plan that we, as you folks, uh, will probably see come down the path in a long time. And uh, um, I, I hope you embrace it. Uh, I think Carla Weasel is here uh, to, from Planning Commission. Uh, and this is just one of many, many steps to come. But this is a critical step for, for, for this process to continue. And I would just add that I don't think it's just necessarily Center directed either. I think it's a it's something that's needed just for, by virtue of the, the you know, Burlington's I think a bigger, it's getting to be a bigger town and more is happening and more is going to happen. And I think that um, it, it, it's necessary for a number, just the zoning alone updates to the zoning. It's, it's frustrating to have to make minor changes um, by both. And to have to redo, you know, redo that every year, and I think it would be beneficial to the town um, to be able to make those changes through the select board. That are, you know, and again, like Tom said, doesn't mean the select board has to decide to vote to approve everything. It just means that they have that option, and they can choose to not approve wider, you know, larger topics if they want that to go to town vote. And if the town, you know, constituents have a problem, they can petition for it to be revoted on. So you know, that particular item to, to go to a town vote if they disapprove one of the um, decisions that you make. So there's mechanisms for the public, there's redress, so I don't see it as taking away voters' rights because of that. I think it's just streamlining operations for the town. As the town grows, it just becomes um, unmanageable. And I do, and I, you know, I think most, Brandy was frankly, you know, Surprised that we had that had that option because most towns now, uh, other than very small towns, don't. So that's my piece. Thank you, Carla. Yeah. I think it makes sense. To yeah. Put it out to the voters at least. Yeah. Well, the thing is that uh, public votes for the most part pre unwieldy as far as uh, their time is. And the, the thing right now is that we're going forward with this is we need to be able to react quickly. And I think this is a good idea as far as streamlining some of it. I'll make a motion to um, um, give the authority to adopt yeah. town plans to the select board. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Now, I probably didn't say that as well as I needed to. Full word, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, this can be put on the November ballot? Yes. Okay. So there's anything else on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you. The next item that we shared with you, and I apologize for the scale of it, but this is brand new uh, for the for the select board. I have a larger scale drawing there, if, if anybody wants to gather around that drawing. 
one of the one of the items for the uh, uh, application is the official map and this is a draft of the official map there's actually two maps it's it's a, a, a map area uh, on on your right of the of your paper of the more concentrated uh, Newtown Center area and and the one on the left shows a uh, a larger section of town that we believe uh, can participate and benefit from the from the town center uh, designation. And what the official map does, it's, it just lists uh, town assets, it lists transportation, it uh, 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 lists municipal infrastructure. Um, uh, these maps show a series of pathways leading from Berlin Town Center uh, up to Berlin Pine and up into the greater um, uh, town forest areas there. Uh, and I think uh, the, our consulting team did a pretty interesting um, uh, job on, on getting pedestrian foot traffic through a very somewhat unfriendly pedestrian foot traffic area to Berlin Pond. Um, and and that's really came from the uh, virtual meetings that we had with our constituency that they were asking for those for these items. What's not on here is the boundary of the of the Berlin Town Center. That's not on the official map. So this is this is just as I said, li listing infrastructure and, and such. And I, again, I apologize for the scale of this. Uh, this uh, we're still we're still tweaking this and uh, adding items to it. Brandy, you want to speak to the the official map at this moment? Um. I think you did a pretty good job summarizing it. Uh, we still need to add the water and wastewater infrastructure um, components to the map. Um, and the planning commission did discuss a few modifications and uh, we wanted to show it to the select board tonight to see if you guys had any red flag questions that we can deal with now. Um, and then this map will is one of the items that needs to be adopted. Uh, in order to get your uh, new town center designation. So it would go through a process to be adopted just like the zoning. So the planning commission needs to hold a hearing on it. You, it would need to come to you and the select board would need to hold a hearing on it. And unless that vote is successful in November, um, the voters will ultimately need to vote on it. If your vote goes through, then the select board could adopt it. Brandy, do you see this vote having to occur before November, or can it be on the November ballot? The question about voting? The official, no. I, I, the question is about voting is going to be, be on there, but we still have to vote as a town on items up until post-November. So will, yeah. th will this map uh, be on the vote for approval by the constituency in November? I don't believe it will because we haven't started the hearing process. So the plan, it, it, it's the same process as for zoning. So yeah. there's the warnings and the hearings, and so it's a several month process. Yeah, okay. So, um, we'll probably start uh, that process right after the November um, election once we know which way the vote has gone. Um, and if it needs to go to a town wide vote, it would go in March. Okay, thank you. So uh, if, if you have uh, questions and concerns on this map, uh, we, can, we can make larger scales for folks. Um, uh, get me those, get me your, your questions or concerns and we will get them addressed on this map. I'll bring it back to you uh, sometime in the relatively near future with, with it cleaned up to a point where we think it's, it would, would be ready for a, for a final submission. Yes, and I don't know what you're looking at because I haven't seen the materials. I just want to, well, no, I've seen the map. I didn't know if there was other. I just wanted to make clear that, because I didn't, didn't hear it, maybe I wasn't listening properly, but the idea of the official map is that it's got the existing assets, but it's also got future. So the trails are future proposed trails. And I, and we, we, you know, we, we could add a lot of future, you yeah. know, items on there, but we chose to be relatively modest um, so that they were doable. Hopefully attainable items and not to go too far and 
into Wonderland about what might happen. So I think that's, I just wanted to add that. So, so the last piece I, sh I shared with you here is uh, is uh, the, I think it's 29, yep, 29 items that we need to complete this application. Uh, you will see the various stages of them. There's a good bit of green, which are complete. Uh, a good bit of uh, magenta, I guess it is, in, in progress. And just a couple that are not started yet. So uh, we are going to share this with the select board on a, on a regular basis. Uh, we want to the whole the planning commission speak to the fire on this. Uh, we want to get uh, we want to have a draft ready application uh, in October November time frame. And so uh, it, we're everybody is doing a lot of work, and we we include you folks as partners in in what we're doing, and uh, we hope to share not only the accolades but some of the work. I also just wanted to add that they follow up on last week that we did, when Brandy and I met with Wayne virtually uh, last week and we had a conversation and the ball sort of his court to take a look at the two uh, designations, uh, the, the develop, neighborhood development area versus town center and kind of, kind of get a sense of what he would prefer. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what would happen once he makes his mind up, but you know, just so you know, we are in conversations. And, Thank you. Um, that's Thank being you. Appreciate that. So this official map doesn't go into the boundary of. Okay, good. No, okay. Does not. If there's no further questions for Brandy, I'd like to let her go. Well Thank you, Brandy. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, Brad, uh, I know we have uh, Tim up on the agenda next, but we have we do have Keith uh, Ken Einerstein here, Chief, and, and he's he's not a paid employee. He's here in the wall here, so <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we want to. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Yep. Uh, fire department, come on down. Joe, Joe, are you on? He isn't. I'm going to text him right now to have him uh, call in. Thanks for coming out. You're welcome. Okay. Hopefully he's hot. So I can kind of get it started. Sure, absolutely. Know. We had a, a meeting for the board of directors with the fire department. Um, last Thursday and a couple of things I wanted to bring to the board's attention. One of it I think might actually require some action so I wanted it added to the agenda um, and the other ones just to kind of fill the board in. Uh, so with the, the project that's going on with the water store over there right by the station, they want to connect to municipal water and sewer there um, and I guess to Converse. Just come in. Oh, okay. That, that might be Jeff Slade. No, it was stuff, Joe. It was Joe. We do have a Jeff Slade up here as well. Yeah, yeah Jeff Pauly. Yeah, oh. Anyway, so they wanted they want to connect to the municipal water and sewer when they talk to I, I forget one of the, the people over there talked to the new boys. Yeah, and I they said with all the change orders and everything, it might be a good idea to, since it's growing project, see if, the ta if they could have it added to a change order and have the fire department reimburse the town. Mm. So I wanted to talk about that. I don't even know if it's possible, but it would obviously require some action. I'm sorry, what are, we, what are you looking at, Pete? So when the water system came through, we had said to the to the board that we would join on the water system, and we actually haven't connected you to the water system. Okay. Yeah. So we want to make good on that promise of connecting to the water system, yeah. and the 
the most economical way we can see that right now, since Du Bois is already working over there, is to basically have Du Bois do the work for the actual water connection. So we have, as part of our contract with them, is for, because there are a handful of customers on Pink Turf like North that now have decided to join water. Uh -huh. So so they have given us a cost to connect these folks. So, yep. so we, if you want to do that, then, then fine, we'll just invoice the, the fire company for whatever yep. that is to, to connect to the water. Yep, and, and that's what we're looking for. So yep. so they can do it while they're there, yeah. and then yep. we'll just get the invoice. And Not a problem. Yep. So, yep. Yep. You know, I don't know if that requires a vote or if that's already been dealt with or, or what have you. So. Uh, from the public work board, they, they have it's okay. part of their contract. With, okay. So and, and we we put a line item in yes. in Dubois contract that and they so give, they've already given us a cost. I can't remember if it's a per foot or per okay. you know whatever it is. They 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 given us a cost. It sounds like the change order is not even necessary. It's it is already not necessary. With, yeah. No. Okay. No. No. It's even better. Deal. Good news. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a hold of, uh, that was quick. I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah, good. Yeah, because yeah, I imagine they're going to want to hear it from the town instead of us. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 And you'll, you will all, you'll be automatically connected to sewer, so there's no changeover for that. We, we, right, because the sewer goes into that pump station right. already, which yeah. is part of the plan. Yeah. So. The pump station will be removed. It will be eliminated, so yeah. you're not paying for the power or anything anymore. Right. It'll just be gravity, so so there's nothing. You don't have to do anything on the sewer side, but on the water side, I'll I'll get that going. Good. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to share with the board was the maybe the board would want to look at some of it was the uh, potential fact finding that the fire department's going to be doing. Yeah, back at town meeting day. I had a discussion with Dana and Brad after the meeting, and they had basically requested um, us to give them a fact finding or a study about a potentially merging the fire department to the town government. And uh, we haven't started that yet because of COVID and all the other fun stuff that's happened. <laughs> but we're we've got the group together we're going to be starting to meet this week and our schedule is to have that our portion of that done november and we can bring it up back to the board in december for your part uh, whether you want to even potentially put it in the um, Town report for the end of the year. You know, that's possible to do that. Yeah. Um, so we're that. This is more of an informative as to our schedule, and we have we haven't forgotten about it. Okay. So, Thank you. Yes. Um, let's see. And Justin, the only other thing that Joe had mentioned to me about was when the when the school board. Um, event happened and the lease of the fire department section of, of land. Right. I don't know if you want to address that or talk about that at all. I don't know what we can do about it. I did um, ask if they were making a water connection in the building since technically they lease from Washington Central now. If they had to get permission from them, which I wouldn't imagine, I don't know. Um, but then it made me think, I wonder what happened with the uh, one time we were still looking at taking that piece off and turning right. it back into a town asset and where we actually had that where the fire department was sitting. If we had thought about that anymore, if anybody had heard anything. I haven't heard anything about that. I wonder if it, I just wanted to keep the conversation going. Yeah. Um, so I kind of forgot about it myself. A little bit of background and, and Joe, are you here still? Uh, I, I'm still here. I can kind of follow the, the conversation. Okay. A little bit of background on it basically is when the station was built back in 89, we obtained a lease, a lease for one acre of land from the Berlin School Board for, nine, for a term of 99 years. So we're talking like, you know, 20. 70, 20, 80, something like that when that lease is up. So maybe 30 now? 
Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I don't know exactly when they when they took the lease out. Um, so it's it's not like it's something that's imminent or a problem. We don't actually pay for this lease. It's just how it had to happen for building this. Lease. So. Well, um, and if everything, if they decided that it made sense for them to be part of the municipality and we as municipality decided we wanted to be part of it, and that was somehow, some way miraculously, we put it in the town center to have a cover that wouldn't have. Yeah, but it's not planned to be in the town center just because of the same issue. Um, uh, um, but what, uh, there's a new superintendent. We have a relationship with him from the, from the Berlin Town Center. I'll reach out to him and maybe we can get together and just go visit him. I know they got a lot of COVID stuff going on, and so, but it, it, he seems like a decent guy. Uh, he's he's pierogies like I do. He's got the same almost last name. So you know, he's a, uh, we, we'll go sit down with him and, and just chat about it and see, see what we can do. Yeah, when you when you contact him, just let me know like, yeah. when you guys want to have a meeting and yep. I'll make sure either Joe or myself, we can uh, yep. make sure we get to it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, and um, that was it for our information that we wanted to share with you. Uh, the, the water connection was the biggest thing, so we can make sure it happens. It, it'll happen. Yeah. Um, did anybody have any questions? I just want to say that, uh, Keith, I don't know how, how long you've been in your position, but it's it's been a real pleasure working with you. And uh, you bring a lot to the table, and I appreciate that. The development review, review board appreciates that. And so thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. How's your membership doing? We're still fairly low on the membership right now. Our active numbers, 15 to 18. So yep. if uh, a plug for membership, if there's any residents who want to join the Berlin Fire Department, Tuesday nights at 6.30 is when we meet, every Tuesday. So. How's the Riverton Station doing? We are looking at that. We have somebody who is interested in leasing a portion of the building from mm -hmm. us. And in with that lease, potential rehabil rehabilitation of the building is going along with it. It's been a long drawn out process uh, where we're still in the discussion phase with that right now. So we did replace or, or redo the roof last year on that building because the roof was uh, critically failing. So that the roof has been taken care of to provide for the safety of the building. Is that a flat roof or so almost a flat roof? Nearly flat. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anything else for Keith? Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Have a good night. Thanks, Steve. You too, Steve. Uh, Tim Davis. Hello, Tim. Good, how are you guys? Good evening. You a junior? Not that many places. Okay. I'll call you a junior then. <laughs> Different middle names. So, as we know, we're back to the topic of the grader. Um, you guys got the new proposal from CAT. Um, we sent that in the other day. Tim got a new proposal because yeah, not that the uh, you know, the idea of running with that, you know, how we had the conversation about the greater, the potential that girls failed, whatever, and we ran a big risk there. And a cat, I think, runs a big risk too. You know, if we run one, they run one. Um, if there was a way to eliminate that, if we decided to move forward with a new piece of equipment, to not have to worry about this one in the meantime. Uh, what they do, they found a, a different grader with a little bit, little bit different setup, but pretty much the, it's the same. same machine, a few different options, but it's actually made. It's it's in Brazil. I believe Jeff's online too as well. Then, but the graders in Brazil, they have to, if we decided to purchase it, um, 
they had to put a scar fire, spin mount scar fire on it. Did you uh, say in Brazil? Mm -hmm. It's where their factory is. Can we go down to visit it? Just uh, <laughs> All right, I'll go get it. <laughs> it's a long drive back. <laughs> That's where the other factory is. Um, most of the manufacturing of the graders, I believe, goes on there. Um, so they'd have to put a mid mount scar fire, but. <laughs> So he's thinking, you know what I mean, before he was talking three, three and a half months, um, the turnaround for this one's gonna be a lot sooner. And then with this one, um, if we decided to purchase it, they would take ours. We would get a month rental for one free in the deal. And then a reduced, even more reduced rate than what he spoke of at the last meeting he was here. And he said that in that month's rental, you know, they would drop it off for two weeks. Yeah, if we only needed it for two weeks, for two we weeks. could have it for two yeah. weeks. They'd take it back another couple weeks. We needed it. They'd bring us one back. I'd do some scheduling with them to get it here. And then that should get us into the new one arriving and then so you need, yeah, I mean, you need something like the month before snow flies, mm -hmm. right, to fix, you yeah. know, level up the roads. So is that usually the month of October? Just to... Well, you'd like to think that it's, you know what I mean, month of October, <laughs> well, the last couple of weeks of September. <laughs> yeah. Usually by the end of October, depending on weather. Yeah. So if it starts the, freezing yeah. up, you might only get the grade half a day because you gotta wait for. You know I mean, it, right. does, it doesn't seem like it, but it doesn't take much to freeze the road down for an inch or two. And right. The reason I bring it up is we're halfway through August now, right? So mm -hmm. you know, by the time we make this deal, it'll probably be September first or close to it, and then I mean, by the time we get done with a month, a month use of a grader. Did you look at the second? Probably not. But based on the uh, in stock status or whatever, uh, take 918 until so, September 18th to facilitate fabrication with an anticipated ship date of 929 for a three week delivery time. Yeah, I'm uh, talking about for the rental though. Right. Like, yeah, well, I was just saying about yeah. that. So I don't. We wouldn't get it until the third week of October, best case scenario. So right. we'd be relying on the rental based on that. Is I guess my point. Right. Um, but it, but it's free for a month, right? <laughs> it's included in the purchase price. That's, that's right. <laughs> okay. The maintenance books in Portuguese. Only. Yeah. Have uh, <laughs> have translated, but you know, I mean, so it's it's a little bit more just due to the fact that it has some different options on it, but some of those options are actually safety features for the machine as well. It has an, uh, uh, the, it has the extreme duty guard hitch cover, which is in the center of it, so you can't get sticks there. You know, snow, whatever else into the center of it. Keeps the articulation part cleaner. Uh, where is it? Anyone check with Dubois if they want to trade for labor? <laughs> <laughs> it has a, it also has the blade lift, it. the blade lift accumulation in it. It's safety feature, so if you hit a piece of ledge, lets the fluid bypass out of the cylinder so the blade actually lifts up so it doesn't jar the machine. So the other one didn't have that type of stuff. So. You know anyone that has that feature? I only ask because it seems like it could be a pain in the butt. It's the same, it's the same, they all come, you know what I mean, it's it's a, just an option that you buy, but it also, it's the same option that we would have had on the turntable. So the blade, if you caught something, it'll let it spin versus, okay. so it's the same thing. It's just like a hydraulic bypass. Okay. So it just, it doesn't jar the machine. It's just, it's, it's just a break. Broken a couple things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Justin, are you going to make a motion to buy this thing or what? So, so that yeah. So I guess that was my first question: is we only have to come up with twenty eight thousand six hundred and seventy dollars to start? Was it? That's the way I read it. Is that yeah, correct? Um, from what they're saying, I don't want to go through a lease. I just can go through a loan. Okay. Because I can have a loan a year in arrears. Okay. okay. Sure. And I can get a 2%, which is very similar to what they're offering, but I can do that. Okay. Do we have any current loan payments where we would be able to possibly pay off the, the remaining balances <coughs> if we got our annual bills to the point up. where it didn't, you know? Are you allowed to pay off early, Diane? A lot of these things are. A lot of them don't. I just didn't know if one of the trucks. Uh, I don't know what the next one I have to do, how many more years I have on that. I have to look, sorry, I forgot to look that up. It's, it, uh, any loan we'd have, we got a truck. Yeah. So maybe what you could do is do a consolidation, because yeah. rates are the lowest they've been. So maybe you could look at just doing a consolidation of all of your capital assets and look at see what that cost is. I can look into that, and I'll that. I have a Yeah, um, because we have done that in the past. Where the, but the only issue with that is that when we did it in the past, by the time the loan was getting done, it was like three pieces of equipment I'm still paying on that we'd already traded out. That's right. Yeah. That's but that's what's done here. Yeah. I don't like. <laughs> I just think no, if we can just pay, yeah. simply pay off one of our short, you know, one of the loans that had a shorter length left on it and free up some How long is the annual money that way. How long is the truck out? Probably what, a year and a half? I don't have that in front of me. I say probably a year and a half. Yeah. 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 They all keep following each other, but we had like a one year gap. Yeah. So yeah, I said there's at least another year for the children. But that's because we all principal to this. You paid your interest. Yeah. I'm going to make the motion to uh, buy the grader for the $247,900 um, with the stipulation that I'd, I'd like Diane to come back next week and give us two options on the best way to pay for it. But I think to start the process, um, please you know, confirm the order. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Second. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'm saying never buy you nothing. Okay, fine. <laughs> Remember, Tim, don't run that trader anymore. <laughs> no. I don't know, is Jeff still on there? I don't know if you guys have any. Yeah, I, I'm here still if anybody has any. Do you guys have any questions for him? Okay. Thank you, Jeff, for all of your time and for taking our questions and considerations into factoring of this proposal for us. Perfect. So, Jeff, you'll go ahead and get that order? Yeah. So, so what we need at this point is, is Bill, I'll, I'll reach out to Tim tomorrow, but we just need somebody to sign a, a sales order based on, you know, the discussion tonight. We'll get the machine ordered. You know, no funds will be will be required for, you know, well, probably a month after we deliver the machine. So we're, we're you know, in, into October, November uh, before we receive any money. So you guys will have all kinds of opportunities to figure out how you want to you wanna leave just, um, or whatever on your own. Jeff's looking for somebody to sign a sales order. Make a motion to allow Tom to sign the sales order for on behalf of the board for the new grader. Second. I second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Uh, Thanks. You got it, Jeff. Send it to me. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Thank you again, everyone. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So just to touch up with you, Brad, did you ask for that second oil sample? Yeah, how bad is it? Yeah. Ain't good. <laughs> what, what metals were up? Uh, I can't even pronounce it. Oh, you don't know. Molybdenum? I looked it up, huh? Molybdenum? Uh, it sounds about familiar. No. Yeah. Uh, M E M O L Y B. Melinda, no. Molly, but Molly, Millennium. Yeah, that's part of the. That's part of the berry. The berry. 
Yeah. What is it? It's a, it's a, the, the crate bearings, the main bearings on an engine are made up of Babbitt material on a steel sleeve. And Babbitt is a conglomeration of many different metals. It's an alloy. And its big thing is that it holds oil, so it lubricates, it stays lubricated. And uh, with just copper showing up, it's odd. But with all the other metals starting to come in, all the other compounds, that's yeah, because you know, I mean, it's only got 110 hours on it since the last sample. Yeah, yeah, they show it and high. The copper is not as high as it was, but it doesn't have the hours on it. But it's yeah. it's up near 100. And then that other metal yeah. went from 89 to almost 200 in just 100 hours. So something's she's getting ready. But better the better Caterpillar owns it than we do. So, so again, when are you going to get the uh, loader? I'll have to talk with Jeff tomorrow because I got phone calls today about road, road yeah, being we, not rough and potholed, and yeah. these thirty-minute downpours are not helping the cause for yeah, the roads. It's creating a, it's creating a lot of potholes. Yeah. Yeah, I would take it, I'd be very conservative with use of that greater now. I've, I've been trying to, only when we absolutely need to, just because, and then I got that just the other day, and then I was like, yeah. okay, okay. more stuff showing up. Okay. So. Thank you, Tim. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks for all your efforts, Tim. Thanks, Tim. He's hanging around. Yeah, I'll be here for a while. <laughs> Here to listen to the job description for the police chief? Yeah. <laughs> Might apply, right? Okay. Police chief recruitment uh, I uh, sent you uh, sometime this a draft job description. I posted it to our website because we have an ad out there looking for a chief and, and saying go to the website to see the job description. So this is on our this is showing you as a draft. Uh this vote oh, this you had a chance to read it. Uh, uh, Trevor Whipple, the Montague City Towns law enforcement consultant, former South Burlington chief of police and current town of Berlin resident, uh, provided this to me. And um, really the only thing he thought that the board may want to give some consideration to is on page three. It's highlighted in yellow in the higher level of education. Um, he, he said that uh, if it was if it was him, he would not put that requirement in for, for this. For this uh, I agree with that. I think I would uh, leave that out per se, but that's my own opinion. So it could stay draft, but I, eventually, I, I would you know think we should make a. This is, you know, this is what we're going to uh, use, and and Chamber of all set before we'll, we'll, we'll the rest of the rest. Yes, he, he provided this. Okay. Yeah, we we talked over the phone, you know, and, and uh, that's the, the one thing that he said that may may give some further consideration. Do you need a motion from us on that? I would. Yeah. Yeah. I just post it. Well, I'll take the draft off it and that, right. now clean up that, uh, that yeah. Can I make the motion to move forward with the job description as presented? With that change, correct? With that one change. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I think I think the only part that I really found interesting and, and maybe the, the former chief did it and in my previous town they didn't really uh, perform um, much in the field. But I see that we are asking, asking of, of that here, which is good, I think. Uh, uh, it's a, a working chief. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought that was really that. good. Mm -hmm, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Is this a salary position, or is that still? Well, I guess it's still be determined, right, by the board through the hiring no, process. Salary. Currently, it's currently, currently is. Currently, currently is salary. But, okay. This is listed as exempt. Full-time yeah. exempt. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you for that. 
So then I bought, then I put together some, just the hiring process. Uh, so you see that there, I reached out to some, some uh, folks. Uh, uh, the chief police of the city, Barry uh, Tim bon, bon, Bombardier, uh, said he would serve on this committee. Trevor said he would serve. Uh, Tor Nelson said he would serve. I had another community member, uh, Bruce, from the... Uh, Where did we end it? No, he was from Wayside, the only Wayside West restaurant. So uh, he said he was, he was, uh, he was uh, committed. But someone mentioned that uh, Pat McDonald's husband was a state trooper, trooper. trooper. that I was going to reach out to him to be the the second community member there is, um, and see if he would uh, be willing to do it. So that so that leaves the the town administrator, two Berlin select board members to be on this committee. And you can see the calendar I put together, um, and then six. Assuming that you guys like this. I have I have a draft of then six going down further on on um, for your consideration. It's speaking to, to Trevor and as as you know, um, we're in some changing times with, with respect to police forcing and, and such and and um, so uh, he just wants wants the town to be, be, be cognizant of that and and um, try to make the hiring process a, a more open process and it may I don't and I, I don't know how it was in the past but just make it a more open more public involvement in it than what may have uh, occurred in the past so uh, if, if you like this this uh, formula I'll continue with six through the, the balance of the hire with, yeah. uh, with it and uh, uh, show something for you guys I'm certainly happy with this. Um, I think of the police li liaison. So, is there a second person that wants to sit on this? They called for two selectmen or select people. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, is there someone else that wants to sit on that? I will. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And then. Just so I understand the last part here, um, the two finalists will both come to the select board and you'll, deter you'll help us with the process after yes. that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, Tom. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, last meeting we opened the bid for the repair of the uh, uh, clerk's wall a car contracting gave a bid of thirty-one thousand. There was some question on, on um, you know what the bid specs were and such. So I, I sent that to you guys a couple weeks ago. I hope you had a chance to review it. I did not put that in your packet. Uh, I, the, the long or the short of it, I had a, a, a good conversation with John Connor. Uh, he shared with me. I think it was his January, February, very detailed quote, and I, I sent that off to you guys as well. And he, he said all aspects of that quote would be incorporated in, into this pricing. So we could we could write a contract that encompasses those tasks. Uh, and so I would recommend that that you folks approve uh, honor contracting for the for the sum of uh, thirty one thousand dollars to do the repairs to the town clerk's office. There was. A, I think insurance says we'll get after a deductible about twenty one thousand three hundred. Twenty three six eighty one. But I think there's a deductible there somewhere. After, that's after the after the contract. Okay. From All the right. Okay. Um, so yeah, they've given this to me. Um, and what the only requirement they're going to have, and I'm sure that Connor will meet it, is that they want it detailed, detail by detail, what he does for that wall. Uh, and so the um, insurance company has given this to me saying, this is just an affidavit saying, yeah, the, the, the damage actually is there, we're going to fix it. So if you sign this, I can notarize it for you. And then they'll send us a check for the 23681, which we can apply towards the $31,000. Is there any way to get one? I mean, so how is our policy written? I mean, if the actual cost of repairs are thirty-one thousand, and we're only insured for twenty, 
Well, they, they have what they're calling replace co replacement cost value, and they determine what the value, they think the value of that wall is. So despite the fact it's going to cost us more to fix it than they feel, feel the value is, they're only going to give us the percentage of the value. And that is this contract you want to look at it. And I doubt very much is their estimate takes into account the impact of, of COVID. I mean, there is a cost to that. Um, it's probably, John said, probably about $1,500. You know. oh. but, but this is their final amount they're going to give us. There's no wrong side. Yeah. I'm going to approve that. How much money is the, uh, Reserves, and we do have a reserve of $5,980 that had to do with the building bond renovation. It goes back to 2006. Yep. So I am thinking that if we use that, we only have to come up with like $1,400 of you know, in additional money as long as it doesn't go beyond the $31,000. And how much, how much is in the, how much is, is in the account for the building uh, maintenance? I don't have that much. What's the idea? Fourteen hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> right on the oh, money, right there, buddy. Amazing. Okay. It's just amazing. <laughs> like a higher power. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not use the building. Use the building maintenance last year for the, for the door. doors. That was seven thousand dollars. So right now, what we have available is fifty nine hundred and eighty, almost six thousand. So we're about two thousand dollars. We should be able to find that somewhere. Yes, I think we can. I make the motion to approve the proposal for the repair of the wall in the town clerk's office presented by Connor Contracting for thirty-one thousand dollars to repair the wall in the town clerk's office. Second that motion. Any further discussion? I think we should have had the motion to have also had you be able to sign the affidavit. Doesn't he have to sign the yep. affidavit? Yep. So we just put that in motion too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, second on the amendment. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Those carries? Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, real quick here, uh, I gave you a copy of the good advertisement for the for water project here on our campus. We are having a, a pre-bid Wednesday the 19th at 10 a.m. here. I guess you're more than welcome to come, as long as there's not more than two of you. And uh, then the bid openings on August 28th at 2 p.m. The question I have for that, do you want Diane and I to open those and put together a, a tabulation of that, or do you guys want to open them at your next? I'd say open them and get a tabulation. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Anything else on that, Tom? No questions. Uh, I might have here, we spoke about uh, the uh, vacation accrual. accrual. Um, you asked me to talk, find out the, the impact of employees under that issue was uh, Diane, TJ, and myself. I'm uh, recommending that the board uh, change their uh, policy for for hourly non-unionized employees vacation accrual from 220 hours un unused to 400 hours unused. This is just because we're starting to run into COVID, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> and we're, we're down some personnel here as well. And, and so uh, I hope you give that consideration. I, I do believe the staff here works hard and, and uh, would appreciate the phone. I, I agree with, with the fact that we need to do something about the vacation. Well, I thought my only concern with the 400 hours, Tom, is I'd almost rather see about like payment 
for any time carrying over because I, I think that puts us in a position where if, if somebody has 10 weeks of paid vacation um, and we already have staff shortages, you know, I mean, it could put us in a position where we're really short. So I think we would be better as a town, personally, that would be easier to manage if we just said, okay, well, I mean, you, you can't carry that much over, you can get, you can get a check for it, or you know, however that needed to be. I mean, does that seem reasonable as well? Yeah, that's because that's what, what I was like su suggested. So, yeah. I was concerned about the long term liability on our books of so more and more people, have, you know, having 400 hours on when you leave, then that's money out the door rather than just time off. Yep. Um, so I would be I would be okay with the pay, paying out of those hours. I think I don't think we should make it a long term thing probably. I think we want people to take vacations, right? We want people to get, well, get re energized and you guys have been super great through this whole thing and uh, certainly stepped up and so you know we don't want to in any way, you know, decentivize you from doing that, but we don't want it to be a long term uh, process. It, you know, and, and really, you folks could revisit this at any time, right? You change this policy. You know, after this settles down, everybody gets normalized. You could, you could, you know, change change this policy in the future. You know? I mean, could we make so, the, could we make the exception for this year and then see how it goes moving forward, yeah. just so we cure it right now? This year being defined as the end of. 20, uh, yeah, 20, what about what about this, this? What about going to fiscal year? That's right. The right. End of fiscal year, June 30. Yeah. Is that June 30 yeah. in 2021? Yeah. So folks could take a payout. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I would say they could take a payout of anything over there. Over the 220. Yeah. yeah. Weekly or pay each paycheck? Or are you talking at the end of the time? Or I would say. Uh, my vision would be to take in, once they get to the 220 mark, you know, they keep accruing, then they start getting, uh, they take a payout on anything over the 220, but yeah. they hold the 220 yeah. to go. Yep. Right. So they, they have to, walk, they, when they do take vacation, they have those hours to take it. With. Right. So they hit 220, you know, they get 10 hours the next pay period, it would be paid out in that check or the, the following check. You're saying in each time after if they didn't use them? I think so because that keeps the, the that keeps the uh, the uh, bookkeeping a little simpler. Yeah. Is that is that having it add up? Oh yeah, what do you think? I don't think it's simpler. <laughs> no, no, that's right. no, I'm the one doing the payroll, so yeah. um, right. I would rather see that um, maybe at the end of the quarter, okay, look, okay, the quarter's gonna end September thirtieth. If you have more than 220, then you have to get paid out up to the 220, the same with me, the same with TJ. Mm -hmm. And then the next quarter, the end of December, let's look at it again, if they still are accumulating. That sounds like, like a good say, plan. I, I, I want to take them off. Yeah. But right sure. now, I'm just going to be quarterly status. I, I think that's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They got to make a motion. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So I move to. Uh, Change temporarily change our uh, personnel policy section 402 um, with the maximum of 220 hours of unused paid vacation and accrual. I move that we anything over 220 on a quarterly basis we cut the check to the employee that's over. But we'll get it yep. through June 30 yep. through the fiscal year 2021. Your second. I second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank um, you. Well, okay, approval of support minutes, July 20th, 2020. I move, move approval of the select board minutes of July, tw July 20th, 2020. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. All right, aye. Motion carries. Uh, Thank you. Uh, round table, Justin. Um, no. 
just going to address, uh, but Carla spoke to it that she had already talked with Wayne who came to our last yeah. meeting about his concern about the town center. So that was the only thing I was going to bring forward. So that was nice that she followed up. John? Great question uh, from the warrant. Um, specifically around it looked like we took our delivery of winter sand about twenty thousand dollars from northeast industrial or materials, or materials. Uh, but we had thirty thousand dollars in newton cost and i'm assuming that was for the delivery of that material it seemed so high yeah they do all the trucking okay yeah for all the materials it, it, so we paid more in trucking than we did for the material an extra ten thousand more. Just okay. It is what it is. I was just I just wanted to see if it, they went together. They okay. Together. Okay. Anything else? We also had the payroll board. Yeah. No. I I just said one more thing. Sure. Um, um, conversations about uh, the town forest and the vast trail two separate right we had the town forest conversation with the arborist or the the tree person that was going to go up have we, yep have we heard anything back from her the only thing i heard back was an email from somebody uh, north west woods or something like that about his proposal to us on the town forest and i said I knew I haven't seen the proposal. Will you please send it to me? Yeah. And I haven't got anything. So right. I, you don't know if that was compensation for damages or a proposal for no. Well, and, and, and in, in my in my note back, I said I believe uh, that that town has hired somebody to go up and look at illegal tapping and or damage to our to our property. Right. But that's not heard back. And then the second piece was about the bridge, but. Furthermore, about the Bass Trail, have we had any additional conversations with anyone about connecting Northfield in Berlin? So by, we, by the last trail? last I heard from the rent board, there was this conversation with Tom Willard. Yep. Um, and I, I believe we talked about it in that meeting at the board, but the last dialogue I've had, they think the recreation committee or board didn't didn't want a wider bridge there to be able to connect with the Bass. They didn't want to have. They wanted it to be a, a more private, and they wanted to keep the width. They were concerned if they had a wider bridge, it would be truck traffic. If you guys recall, um, so it's going to be really hard to get support to, to tie those two together. But my, I, when I think about it, it is Darling Road. It's a Class Four trail that's approved, um, and so I think even if we can't do the ridge line because maybe they, they don't want us up there for whatever reason. I think number one, it's really a safety concern to be able, if, you know, the mountain bikes and people up way out back to be able to get a side by side through there. Mm -hmm. And they got, you know, outdoor recreation's huge, especially uh, now that people are not going to movie theater, going to malls, going to places like that. Spain. Not taking vacation. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I haven't heard anymore, I don't know if anybody else has, but I, I really would like to figure out a way to be able to tie. I think that's a huge piece for a lot of the growth. You know, I think there's a lot of potential influx of recreation. There's a potential for a lot of users. Yeah. I think it would be a really, I mean, it could be a great thing. I mean, it could. So, I wish the board would try to push a little harder on the rec committee maybe to get a yep, I'm still new so tell me where I'm off the rec board makes a recommendation to the town select board on what to do the town select board decides is that correct okay that's what I believe okay but it's nice to have everybody on the same page. oh absolutely yeah it makes things a little easier but so yeah we approved them to be able to spend money on the bridge that was a safety issue but encourage them to build it at a width great enough to be able to get side by sides, things mm -hmm. like that, through for future use. Have they not? Have you walked up there? I have not. I, have, you know, I don't even know. If, I mean, last time I was up there was when Josh Walker and I repaired it. Um, so I'm not sure. I I didn't see anywhere that we had expended any funds on it. Right? We would have seen that even if. 
the funds for the bridge, we would have seen that in the warrant. Yeah. Yeah. Can we ask them to come into our next meeting? I'm sure for a discussion. Yeah. That'd be great. At least one of them. Right. Okay. Thank you. That was it. Okay. Um, approve license permits and options and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-04 for payroll from August 2nd, 2020 to August 15th, 2020, paid on August 19th, 2020, in the amount of $39,564.08. Also payable warrant 21-04 with check 2422 to 2481 in the amount of $104,541.05. July reconciled bank statements, general fund, sewer commission, and water division. Also the Jur July general journal entries and the July trial balance, budget status report, and billing book tax report. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And there will be an executive session tonight on legal and personnel. I'd like Jim Davis and myself to be invited to that executive session. Certainly. Move to enter executive session for personnel and legal issues. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We're in executive session. <laughs>